I'd like to talk to a little bit today about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. You see, I perhaps maybe I look at things different than most people because when we talk about things that are political, there's a couple of things that I, I think we're always asking the wrong questions. For instance, when uh, the federal government passed health care reform, you know, people are like, well, what are we going to do to cover this and what are we going to do to cover that? Well, the question we should be asking is, when did the federal government ever have authority to be involved in health care in the first place? So I want to talk a little bit about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and what they are. You see, in the United States, we live in a constitutional republic. That means that we have certain rights and privileges that are spelled out. The Constitution and Bill of Rights was not written to spell out people's rights and privileges. It was written to tell the government what they could and could not do. The federal government has a few jobs that they're in charge of. They're in charge of foreign policy. They're in charge of the ports and, um, and the borders. And they are in charge of the military and protecting our country. And they're in charge of things that are interstate, that go from one state to the other. And if you start studying, you'll see how backwards our government is right now. So with elections coming up soon, I want you to think about, when you start thinking about a candidate, you know, what candidate really honors the Constitution? I can't find any of them that do. There are several of them that give lip service to it, but they don't either don't understand the Constitution or they don't care. Um, when it comes to the Constitution, it spells out what the government has authority to do, and that's it. That is it. Uh, for instance, you know, we have problems right now with freedom of religion. Does it not say in the First Amendment that Congress shall pass no law regarding the institution of religion? We have a candidate running right now that says as soon as she gets in there, she's going to uh, pass laws that uh, restrict and take away our right to bear arms. Well, when did the federal government have any authority to regulate firearms at all? It's not. That authority was never granted to them. And what's happened over the years is that people have, uh, in our government, have taken this into their own hands and passed laws that are unconstitutional. What does unconstitutional mean? It means that they were never given that authority to do it and they did it anyways. Well, that's illegal. These laws uh, that are being passed are illegal and really have uh, no uh, legal backing to support them. So, what's the big problem that we're facing in the country? Well, it's what I refer to as kingmen. It's people that go along with it. It's people like judges and lawyers and policemen that honor and obey unconstitutional laws. These laws have no merit, but if we don't obey them, the people follow along because if they don't obey them, then they get heavy fines and they get jail time and you know, and it all trickles down. We um, complain a lot about the federal government and some about the state, but you also need to look at our local governments. I just saw another report the other day of a lady up in Montana who the government was coming to arrest her for not taking care of her lawn. Give me a break. The government does not own her property as, you know, that's in the Fifth Amendment that we have a right to private property, which means that that's our own little sovereign piece of ground and the government has no place to make rules and regulations regarding that piece of property. So <clears throat> there is a, a um, group, or I shouldn't say a group, but there are people that are rising up and standing back or, or pushing back against uh, this type of regulation. But let me explain to you one thing. When our Constitution uh, was put forth in this country, 
within the first hundred years of having that constitution, our country became the wealthiest country in the world. Not only were we wealthy, but we had half of the wealth of the entire world in this country. Was that a coincidence? No, it was from freedom. Freedom for the free enterprise system and freedom uh, to have a government that we the people are the ones that put forth what, <clears throat> what the government could and could not do. Since about 19, well it was in uh, December 23rd in 1913, uh, some bankers uh, had got together, and anyways, they, they pushed some legislation. And on the 23rd of December of 1913, they passed the Federal Reserve Act, which basically turned our printing of our money and so forth in this country over to the Federal Reserve, which is a private um, industry. It's not owned by the government. And ever since then, the government just seemed to discard the Constitution and our our uh, country has gone on a gradual decline ever since then with rules and regulations. It wasn't until 1927 that the first uh, federal gun law was passed and there again they had no authority to do it but the people didn't stand up and push back. Well now people are starting to wake up and is it too late? I don't know if it's too late, but we need to start pushing back. We need to get good people in office, and we need to have people that understand the Constitution, that understand freedom, people that love freedom, that understand um, what those freedoms are and what the role of government is. <clears throat> I, I try to explain so many times to people about this authority and they say well you know Congress Congress uh, okayed this and Congress okayed that well I'm telling you Congress never had that authority to do that they never how would you feel if you woke up tomorrow and Congress had rewritten the Constitution and Bill of Rights just completely re rewritten and said okay these are the new rules you have to go by well, they have. They have done that. Because, for instance, you have, uh, in the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Well, you go to have a, a rally somewhere, and the local government tells you you need a permit to do that. Why? Where do they have authority to charge you a permit or issue a permit for you to go exercise that free speech? They're telling you if you want to carry a concealed weapon... Uh, that you have to have a concealed weapons permit. Where did they get authority to tell you you had to have a concealed weapons permit? And the list goes on and on and on. And so, like I said, I hope that I can at least spark interest in you by releasing this video to you to go and research. Okay? Because I want to let you know that a lot of people get carried away in politics and and this is this and that's that but what the Constitution is is a standard it's a stake stuck in the middle it is not an opinion it is not um, a document that you can or or may or may not follow it's not outdated it is a rule book that the government has to go by and some will say, well, wait a minute, the states can do whatever they want. Well, look at your state constitution. The state constitution in Idaho, Article 2, 2 in the Idaho state constitution says clearly that Idaho recognizes the constitution and bill of rights as the law of the land. And the states don't have a right to overrule that either. So let's get back to our constitutional principles. Let's get back to being the wealthiest country in the world. Let's get back to being a free people. And let's get back to taking back our government and making them answer to us. If we can't do that, then what good is all the work that our soldiers have done since the founding of this country? And what are we going to do? 
we've either got to reverse it or we're going to lose it all. And that is the price of freedom. Thank you.